know, how much you feed somebody or how much you take them somewhere or how much you do for them. What keeps you in the family of God is God. Uh, your, your salvation, your love, your, uh, your, His grace, His mercy, His spirit. How, you know, how much uh, you're going to just give yourself over to Him. That's what keeps you in God's house, God's family. Uh, and it's sad to see so many wandering away from that. Uh, but it is good to be in God's house. Uh, and God is still God. And God is still on the throne. God is uh, uh, still King of kings and Lord of lords. Uh, still Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Uh, by him was all, all things created. Without him was not anything made. So uh, we need to just remember that our faith is not placed in something that is fading. Our faith is not placed in something that's that's uh, wandering and gone and, and going away or dead. Our faith is placed in a living God. Yeah. Uh, and that that is what should drive us uh, every day is that my faith <coughs> is not in... Uh, a fairy tale, my faith is not in something false, my faith is not in something uh, dead, but my faith is in a living God that is very much in the center of everything that's going on, very much in the, uh, in the, the, the world that's happening around us. It's not a surprise to him. He knows what's happening. He knows all the problems. You know, uh, I was reminded a little bit earlier of a, of a song an old song in the hymnal, it says, sin is to blame. Uh, and it goes through and lists the, you know, the troubles of this life. It, said, it tells how uh, there, there's hungry children. It tells how uh, fathers are drunkard and, and says this man's in prison and this has happened and that's happened. But the point of the song is sin is to blame for all of that. Sin is to blame for all of our troubles. And we are we sin, the Bible says, when we're drawn away of our own lust. In other words, it's in every one of us to be tempted. It's in every one of us as human beings to be tempted by the devil. And we allow that temptation uh, to dwell with us. We allow that lust to grow in us, and then we sin. And when sin is, brought for, uh, when sin is uh, finished, it brings forth death. Uh, now, I'm not trying to paint an awful picture this evening. I'm trying to tell you of a hope. A hope in Jesus Christ. And uh, if you got your Bible, turn to, turn to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Uh, and I'm going to read verse 14 and 15 uh, in just a minute. But I don't know how many of you... Uh, watched the debate the other night and, and I'm not going to be political, I promise. But I, I was just struck by how much of a, of a circus our country has come into. Uh, how, how, how strange and how hateful and how uh, just it just seems as though everybody is so angry, everybody is so mad, everybody is so upset, they're doing this, they're talking about people, they're pointing fingers here, they're doing this. And I, I began, that's what brought this scripture to mind, was that, that we, I'm talking about believers in Christ, are supposed to be different. We're supposed to not do those things. You know, we see uh, we see some preachers on TV, or we see some Christian coalition, or we see some group that has the name of Christ somehow involved in it, and yet they're spewing anger and they're spewing hatred. Uh, and the Bible tells us, uh, I'm instructed in the Word of God to hate one thing. And I... Can anybody tell me what that one thing is? Sin. That's exactly right. That's all the Bible tells me to hate. 
is sin. And uh, everybody else, even uh, my enemies, even people that do wrong with me, even people that would bum off of me and borrow from me, I'm supposed to love them. Uh, and why do we do this? In this scripture it says, uh, and, I, and, and this goes along with some of the things that have been going on this week. In verse 14 of chapter 2 of Philippians it says, Do all things without murmuring and disputing, that ye may be blameless and harmless to sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Now think about that statement. Think about what it's telling us. That we are supposed to do all things without arguments, without disputes, without complaining. Now, is that completely possible in, in the fallen world that we live in? Paul is telling us to aim for it, to shoot for it. To go for that height to say, we are supposed to rise above that. Now he just, if you read a couple books prior to this in Corinthians, he was he was instructing them because they were arguing with each other, they were taking each other to court, they were uh, they had crazy infidelities inside their family, they had all these problems going on. But Paul was telling them it's not supposed to be that way. The same as preachers should be telling people today, and as I'm telling you tonight, that it should not be that way, that we are called to be, to rise above those things. We're called to be uh, uh, children of light, if you will. And he said that in the first part of that 16th verse, he said, holding forth the word of life, that, that we're putting it forth, that we're a child of God, that we're going to be honest, that we're going to be uh, uh loving, that we're going to be uh, not hateful, that we're not going to uh, run around angry at everybody, that we're not going to run around doing all, and, and we and we see it all around us, and yeah, I understand. There's things that, that we look at and we, we get angry and we don't understand why these things happen. We don't understand how uh, we look and we say, how could they be so blind? Think about that statement for a minute. How can they be so blind? The Bible says that all men without Christ are blind. Everybody, anybody without the Lord Jesus Christ is blind. And we look at them because I'm a believer in Christ. I have a faith in Christ. I have a hope in Christ. I have a hope in a life beyond this life. And I look at them and I say, how can they be so blind? And the Lord just said, because the Bible tell, says that if they're not saved, it's because they're blinded by the God of this world. They're blinded by Satan. And that's, that's desiring that they come to know God, desiring that they not, not uh, putting them down, not talking about them, not uh, dragging them through the mud and all the things that are going on around us every day in the world that we live in. We're supposed to be the light that's shining to a world. Is it possible? Yes. In yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the grace yeah. and the power and the Spirit of God, it is possible for us to walk that way. It is possible for us to love our enemies. It is possible for us to be angry and hold our tongue and not sin. It's possible for us uh, to... Pray for those that despitefully use us. And it's possible to, uh, if a man uh, strike you on the right cheek, you turn to the other. It's possible if somebody sues you at the law to take away something from you, just go ahead and give whatever goes with it. It's possible. But it takes, you know, as Jesus said, this kind cometh not but by prayer and fasting. In other words, it takes wanting to be close to the Lord God Almighty. That's what it takes. That's what it takes not to be not to be so angry, not to be so judgmental, not to be so argumentative and, and causing problems and disputing about everything. Uh, it takes us getting close 
to God. You know, and, uh, I'm a servant on the mount. The Lord said that if we we do things for Him, He said because that we would let our light shine before men that they may see our good works. He said your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So He said if we if we do the things that He laid out in the in the Beatitudes where He said that that we're poor in spirit that the kingdom of heaven is ours and we're blessed if we're born because then we'll be comforted. We're blessed <coughs> are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth, and that, that we do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled, and blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy, and blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, and blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Oh, no. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He said, when we go through all these things and we and the world reviles us and the world turns against us and the world does all these things, if we keep the standard high, we shine as lights to the lost and dying world. We shine as lights in the midst of this world and we glorify the Father which is in heaven. Where somebody can actually look at us and say, I know that God is real. I know that being a Christian is a real thing because I have seen it in action. That should be our heart's desire. I know that Jesus Christ can change somebody's life because I've seen it with my own eyes. I've witnessed it. And he said that that's, that's what Paul was telling us, that, that we need to be doing that, that we need to not be the trouble causers, uh, but the peacemakers. Not the not the angry ones, but the, the calm ones that are trying to, to bring peace. You know, and in the book of Romans, Paul had already written to them to say, look, the powers that be are there because God has said it's okay. That God has ordained it. God has put them there. Governments are in place because God put them there. And you think, if you think about all the evil that's happened in the world, listen, there, there, God has a plan. God has a reason for everything. You know, if you think about the, uh, you, you think about Hitler and the Nazis and the Holocaust and all those things, that led way to Israel being a country again. It had, it had a reason. That pointed in a direction. It had a reason. And God is calling us to realize that we are his children, we are his saved family of God, we're the body of Christ, and that we live in the midst of this crooked and perverse nation, and we see, you know, uh, all around us the, the, the evil that's going on, the trouble that's going on, the, the, the hatred, the anger, all the things that are going on, and God has said, look, I put you in the midst to shine. I put you where you are to shine as a light in the midst of a world that's gone dark. Or it's always been dark. But it's darker, if you will, than what it was, maybe. I don't, you know, I didn't live in the Middle Ages. I didn't live in ancient Rome. I can't witness for those times, but I can say now we're here. We're here right now, and this is the time that God chose us to be born in this world. And it's the time that God's given us to be here. And he's called us to be lights in the midst of a crooked, perverse nation. And it will only be done through the grace and spirit and power and the love of Jesus Christ. That's how we shine. We don't shine by, uh, you know, when my kids play ball, we don't, we don't shine by the one that runs down on the basketball court and gets a, and gets an argument with the referee. And then somebody says, don't you go to uh, such and such church? Uh, you know, I thought he was better than that. That's not how we shine. We shine by rising above this world. We, we shine. We don't shine by... Uh, falling into the traps that have been set by Satan. And 
And you know, we, we're all, uh, I, I'm not saying that everyone, put it this way, every one of us can sin and fail. It's, 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 the, it's the battle that's going on between us. It's the battle in our, in our hearts, in our, in our flesh that we deal with every day. It's the battle of a lifetime. But I'm saying that God has said with him all things are possible. With him all things are possible. And if he says that, that's what he means. If he says that, that's what he means. Now, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of a, of a nation that's, that we look at we, and we just kind of roll our eyes and think, how, how did it get this bad? God still called. God still called us. It, you know, even you know, God forbid, even if, you know, say, if the United States fell tomorrow and was no longer a nation, God has still called us 